Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, how's everybody doing? Yes. Amazing? Yes. All right. We want to welcome our visitors. We want to welcome our state national friends. Welcome to church. Welcome to Legacy Community Church. We are a Bible training center. Amen? Amen. As who we are. So welcome. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, <laughs> we know what season we're in. And you're hearing all the songs, all the stuff about the birth of Jesus, right? He's not a baby anymore. Right. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> it was funny. We were looking at some things yesterday, and, and that was the emphasis about the baby Jesus. And it's like, yeah, I thank goodness for his birth. Because if it wasn't for his birth, I wouldn't be here today. If, if it wasn't for him saying yes, if it wasn't for God's purpose. And Pastor Danny was talking uh, last week, and real quick, we're going to go to Matthew 1. Just going to hit on that, but then we're going to kind of expand on some things. Because people do tend to forget, and even myself have to be reminded, we know Jesus came what? To make a way, right? But make a way to who? To the Father. To the Father. And so we're going to start in verse 18, just to hit that real quick. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived is, uh, in her is of the Holy Ghost." Now, Joseph's intents were good, right? They were. He wanted to protect her. He did. He wanted to protect her from what? Other people's opinions. So he had to what? He also had to have a moment where the angel came and spoke to him, reassure him. And that's what I love about this, you know? So then he goes on and says, and she will, verse 21, and she will bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as what? God with us. And that's exactly what it is. And again, people, a lot of people have forgotten the emphasis of that. What is his name? Emmanuel. And if you really go look at that the, and, and understand, I went back and looking at the name of Jesus, seeing the purpose of it, right? But this right here is huge because it is talked about in Isaiah. And it, again, God with us. So we have to really get it in us. And we talked about this Tuesday a little bit, really understand and get it in us that God is the one that we now have direct access to. If you don't think you do, then you're thinking wrong because we now have direct access to him. We're born again, right? Yes. So we have direct access. Those that are not born again do not. And people have to understand that. People can call on God all day long, but if they are not born again, it does them no good. Right? Doesn't mean that they don't want to know him. And we were talking about being a Bible training center, teaching who we are, what? Who we are in Christ. Right? And we what? Develop believers in their gifts and callings, correct? That's huge. That's big. So we're talking, if we're this Bible training center, we have to, and we're teaching believers, when they get born again, then, oh man, the journey that they begin to take is amazing. So we're going to go back and we're going to look at Isaiah. And we're going to go back to Isaiah 9. Because we know his name is Emmanuel. God is with us. Isaiah 
And verse 6, and I've got several scriptures I want to go over. Verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, a son, unto us a son is given. Now that word son means a builder, as a builder of the family name. Hmm, yeah, that's what I was like, really? It also means afflicted. It means anointed one, appointed to an arrow. So here, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son, a builder of the family name. Well, isn't that what Jesus came to do to bring heaven on earth, right? To give us direct access. Now stay with me in this. And then he goes on and says, a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now when you look at this word government, it's listed two times. It means rule, dominion, empire, government. It comes from the word sara, means to persist, exert oneself, persevere, have power as a prince to prevail. Isn't that interesting? So if we take scripture and again, people take scripture, they read it, they go, oh, okay, this is what it means. I get it. No, go study it. Because he's already, when they talk about prophesying these things, what has he just said here and done? Just in these two little, little things, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son, one who has come, what? To be a builder of the family name. Man, and aren't we sons and daughters? So aren't we called to do the same? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now also, when he talks about the word son, it comes from the word bana, which means nation, a quality or condition. So first, we've got unto us a child who is an offspring. Offspring of who? God himself. So now we get the offspring of God who's come to us, unto us as a, unto us a son is given. One that's going to what? Develop the family name. He's the one coming in that is going to do what? As he comes in, he's going to be a builder of the family name. He will be afflicted, but he is anointed. He is the anointed one. He is also appointed. So man, right there alone, it's like, well, there's the message. There you go. So when he's, they're talking about it and they're, and they're releasing it prophetically, again, so much is in just that part right there. The first what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 11, 12. Uh oh, wait a minute, 12. First 12 words. 12 is what? Authoritative. It's apostolic. It's government. First 12 words. Man. But then he goes on and he says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. This word government again is rule, dominion. It means empire. Hmm. So, it's going to be upon his shoulders. But now I'm going to go back again. And I'm giving you in, kind of in spurts because it's to get you what? Re repetition. I'm big on repetition. Going through it rep repeatedly. And some people are like, come on, come on. And I'm one of those people. But I've, I know in myself, if I don't keep going back and back and back and back and back, it's not going to hit in me. So, we're going to go back, verse 6, very first of it, it says, For unto us a what? Child, an offspring is born. Unto us a son, one that is what? A builder of the family name. He's going to be afflicted. He's an anointed one. He's appointed. Unto us as a son is given. That word given is from Nathan. 
It means to add, apply, appoint, assign, avenge, be healed, bestow. Is that not who Jesus is? Isn't that what he does? Again, look at what's in the first 12 words. He's got a big job, doesn't he? So it's not just a baby in a manger. There's so much coming with him that's in him, but he gets to grow up like what? He gets to grow up like everybody else. He gets to throw a ball, right? I think you said earlier he cried. He probably, when he needed something as a baby, he cried too. Mm -hmm. So he did all those things too, right? Because that's what's in him. But he had to what? He still had to grow before God was ready for it to show up on the scene, right? It was in him. Just bear with me. Just keep flowing with me. Everybody good? So then when we talk about the word government, again, we talk about empire, rule, dominion. He said it's on his shoulder, right? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And when it uses that word shoulder, it means a place of burden. It's the neck between the shoulders. Man, how many of y'all get stressed with something and all of a sudden you feel it in the neck? All of a sudden you feel it, it's like, oh my goodness. Well, this is where he says the government shall be upon his shoulder. Well, he's the head of the church, right? Yeah. So if the government is going to be on his shoulder and he's using the neck portion, you know, we <laughs> probably gave him a lot of stress sometimes, huh? <laughs> he probably had a lot of stress. I know I have. But whose government is it? It's his. So just, just keep bearing with me. Just, we're, we're going somewhere. He said, and his name shall be called wonderful. The word name is here means a base, an infamous, renowned as a mark or memorial of individuality by implication, honor, authority, rapport. And report. So a name means something. When people hear Legacy Community Church, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? We are a Bible training center. Why? Because is that part of our vision? Is that the very first thing that we see, we hear? Right? Yeah. It's the very first thing, but yet we sit there, and so many times we were talking about this earlier, people see the word church on it, and they automatically have an understanding and interpretation that, um, you know, people get. But we're different. Are we not? A bit, just a bit. <laughs> we watched, we watched, what, who was it? The, what was that show? It, was it uh, Frosty or Rudolph? It was Rudolph on the Island of Misfit Toys. <laughs> we had to go watch that. I'm okay with being considered a misfit by the world because with him, I'm not. With him, I'm not. With him, I'm a daughter, a son, which that means what? If I'm a son, then I'm a builder of a family name. So here's what we have to do. Are we building the family name? See, how we respond, how we act, how we obey reflects him, does it not? What we do with our situation and our circumstance literally reflects him. If we say that we're what? Christians, right? And the world's not going to know any different because the world already tries to tell us how to be Christians. <laughs> and I'm like, y'all have no clue. That's why you get so mad at us because we are being Christians. We are standing on truth. We're standing for what government, authority, rule, dominion that we have been given. Yes, by, because of what? Who Jesus is. So I'm building a family name, and no, you're not going to like it. But that's okay. That's, that's okay. It really is. Be mad. Go home, be mad. I'm, I'm doing great. But see, I wasn't taught that way when I came in. 
to the church. When I came in and gave my life to the Lord, I was taught, well, you're going to endure and you're going to have to go through and you're going to, basically, you're going to be a walking mat and you, you got to stand there and take it. It wasn't until later I found out differently. So if you hadn't had to go through it, that's great. But that's not how I came into it. So I thought it was okay. But then when I found out it wasn't, ooh, it was on then. It was on then. Because, see, I found out first and foremost, God said, this life is temporary. This is not your final destination. You will live forever, regardless where it'll be. See, some, some people don't realize that either. You're going to be one place or the other, right? right. It's eternal. So, really, does anybody ever really die? No. no, not at all. But the thing is, when I got that understanding and found out where my eternity stands, I'm like, ooh, why not be bold? Why not take, as we say, chances? Why not? See, that's the thing. A lot of people aren't taking chances because they're sitting here and they're trying to find excuses. But so far, everything is based on him. He's got, I mean, seriously. Look at the responsibility that God has called him to do. But I get to what? I get to continue this. Because it says, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. Wait a minute, God, the Mighty God? Yes, absolutely. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Well, if he's the Prince of Peace, then why do we walk around without it? Why do we walk around without our joy? Because it's his, is it not? Come on. See, you got to find out what he's given you. You've got to find out what he's already given you. Again, we're talking born again believers. That's why the world, when we see people that are in the world and they're not in the place that they know Jesus, they sit there. And they, they struggle. And it's like because you don't know Jesus. Well, why do I need to know Jesus? Let me tell you what he's going to give you. Let me tell you what he's going to bring to the table. But see, people don't know what's telling him he's going to bring to the table because they don't know. People that have accepted him as Savior but not as Lord. He saved me, but let him be Lord. Let him direct you and show you. Find out who he is. Jesus said, okay, I've done my part. Did Jesus not do his part when he went to the cross? Absolutely, his part is done. So now that Jesus' part is done, now I've got access to God directly. Je hey, Jesus, what's up? Let's go, come on, let's go talk. Right? We can go to the Father. We have the Holy Spirit. Jesus intercedes for us. He does those things. But now I can boldly go. See, some people won't boldly go. And how do I know? Because of conversations, again, that we hear. You can tell where somebody's at by the way they talk, the way they live, right? right. Come on, it's all good. <laughs> I promise. So here, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be what? No end. Isn't that pretty cool? But see, people right now keep looking at the wrong government. And they're not willing to take his government because his government is in you. Remember, he's ahead. He's sitting in heavenly places. Is he not? And are we right there with him? Absolutely. Man, I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father with him. So why can't I be bold enough? Because I don't want to. It really comes to that point. You either do or you don't. You will or you won't. So he says, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will what? Perform this. He will do what he said he would do. Go back. upon his kingdom to order it. We have a government out there trying to go every which way they can to what? Pass an order. But see, in the kingdom, that's what's so powerful about kingdom and government because 
what people don't understand, and this is where whenever you look up the word submission, people think, well, or submit or subdue, they go, oh, that means, you know, obey and obedience. You got to catch something. It literally means to bring to order. If you're in your marriage and you're supposed to what? Submit to one another. That means you come together. If you're in him, both of you, you submit, you are bringing to order your household first. You brought yourself to or in order, right? But then you come together and you bring order. Yes? Yes. Okay. So here, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment. You mean I can judge? Yes, I can. Absolutely, but the world goes, you cannot judge me. Well, I can according to your fruit, because that's all I need to know. Don't, again, I tell people, they sit there, well, the Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. Judge me, please. Judge me. Exactly, by the word of God. Because if I'm not doing right, I want to do right, so I need somebody to what? To judge, to judge me. That doesn't mean a bad thing. It just means, <gasps> We don't want you messing up, so <laughs> we need to talk to you. Look, this, you know, show me. And if I am, then I'll get it right. But so many people get offended because they're like, you can't judge me. You got it wrong. See, you're already offended. You're, you're walking in offense. You're not really wanting to have victory. Because if you do, then you'll accept it. And you'll be like, ah. Oh. Because that's what we call putting this under subjection. So then he goes on and establish it with judgment and with justice. Do you know? He's the one that is going to go in for my battles. He's the one that's going to get me justice. Yes. For anything needed. He says from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will what? perform this. He will do this. Those two scriptures right there, you could study on. And I'm telling you, I was like going all over the place. I was like, this is so good. This is amazing because I see things I didn't see before. I see things here and I'm like, wow. So when, when Danny was talking last week, last Sunday, if you haven't gotten the message, go, go listen. He said, it's very simple, but how complicated do we make it? So I take those things and I like to break them down because I want to create this bigger picture. See, we haven't stopped casting a vision. Have we, have, have we stopped casting a vision? No. What we're doing, if we're a Bible training center, we're going to keep on and we're going to keep on and we're going to take the things and then we're going to expound on them. Why? We're casting a bigger vision because you need to know the vision of who he is and why he came. Now, here's what's pretty cool, too. Go to 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, I'm going to start at verse 13 because I've got some other places I want to go. It says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized unto one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member but many, right? If the foot shall say, Because I'm not, not the hand, I'm not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. If the ear shall say, because I'm not of the eye, I'm not of the body. It is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has what? Pleased him. He set the members in the body. Now here's what's the problem. And we were talking about this earlier. People go, I'm called here. I'm called to be a member. See, people got that wrong too. They think it's what? They think it's just a social club to come in, 
sign a piece of paper, I'm a member here. No, when you say you're called to be a member, you're called to be part of what? The body here. See, you got to even get it more personal. Just because it's on a piece of paper, that, that's not the member we're talking about. We're talking about being a member of his body, right? right. You say he's called you here, okay? So if he's called you here, because he goes and says, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, what? In the body, as it pleased, what? Him. And there was something I caught, and I'll read here, and I'll keep going here in a minute, to give another understanding about who he and she is that I had never seen before. And it hit me, and I was like, I like that. It even gives a little bit more to understand why each of us are so important to obey where God has placed us. Jesus came, right? We say, oh yeah, he came to give us life and life that, what, more abundantly, right? But we have to also understand, like we were reading in Isaiah, what was being prophesied. It's a, it, yeah. He's setting you up for success. He's bringing it all. And all you got to do is accept it and then like what? God and you work that out, right? Through the Holy Spirit. So you got to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. You do. So when you come here, so many times people have taken the church and they sit there and they go, I'm a member of the church. I signed my paper and, I, and I, I'm a member now. No, you're more than that. You're not just a member on a piece of paper. You now get to come in, sit in a body and begin to find out what your member does. See, I know when I came into ministry, so many people didn't know what to do with me. I didn't even realize what my gift was till later. And then I found out even more now, I'm finding out more about it. It's not always what I thought it was. So it's important that we understand we have to come in, but you have to have somebody who can what? Help develop you. Now remember, we're a Bible training center. Do you think that's just this body? Absolutely not. A Bible training center. What does a center do? A center has an open door policy. You come in, but if God's called you here, be willing to sit for the time because you're being developed as a what? Member of the body. Well, I, you know, God, I mean, we're connecting in these relationships, but I have my own church. Well, but guess what? You still need to be developed as a member of his body, as members of this body are being developed. Okay, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Because this was good. I was like, I got excited. Again, I know sometimes some people think, you get excited a lot. I do. <laughs> because when you get excited, it opens you up to hear more. It opens you up to see more. And it also opens you up to say, oh, there I am. Is that what that is? And I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, let's see, we're at verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it had pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, but yet, yet, but what? One body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. They're necessary, but they have to have the right one who can help them develop who they are as a member. And some struggle with that because it's going to require you to put your flesh under subjection. It's going to require you to be focused. It's going to require you to be disciplined, right? Everybody's like, I'm not saying nothing. It says, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow, bestow what? More abundant honor. And our uncomingly parts have more abundant comeliness. That's powerful. How many of us know how powerful a pinky toe is? That's your that helps your balance. If you don't have toes, can you walk? No, you got to learn how to walk again. And you got to have a prosthetic. Got to have help. So we got to think that each one of our members, what? There is a significant purpose. But here's the thing. Do you see yourself as significant? 
well, I'm not, oh, I'm not in that position. I'd like to do that over there. Do you know what it takes to do that over there? If you don't, it's because God hadn't called you to do that over there. What's he calling you to do? The very thing you probably don't want to. How many people, <laughs> come on, how many people resist it? Thank you. Thank you back there for that hand. I appreciate that. Because it's true. There are times that I have struggled with doing stuff that I know I needed to do, but what, what, where was my battle? It was here. It really was. We were talking the other day, and just, just hear me on this, and I was sharing this morning. Farron had told me when we first met, when he was down in Lawton, that God told him, you'll never have to worry about money again. And he's brought that to the table because we have sat here and we, we tithe. We're very faithful and we tithe above. And so when we were, he told me that, didn't think anything about it. And then I was getting ready the other day and the Lord brought that back to me. And I was like, hmm, why are you bringing that back to me? But he's also been bringing back to me about a Bible training center. Not the whole vision at the moment, the Bible training center, because the rest of it is in there. It really is. If, if you see this, the rest of it is all in there. So now you've got the main title. Now you get to find the bullet points of, and find out what are those bullet points. What does that mean? Well, the scripture's right there. Okay? So the Lord kept bringing it back, and then the Lord spoke to me. He said, you remember when he told you that I told him he would never, never struggle for money again. He'd never have to worry about it. I said, I do. And he said, do you know why? I was like, well, he trusts, you know, you go back to, he trusts you, this, this. He said, because I put you in charge of finances. You can worry about so I can deal with it. <laughs> but what was interesting, it hit me because I got another revelation of something. I understood it wasn't something that happened overnight for me. And I shared this a little bit last time. But I had to go and seek wise counsel because, see, God told him, you'll never have to worry about this again. So he could have been like, okay, Lord, are you going to supernaturally drop it out of the sky or whatever? No, he's always said, I trust God. And in the moments where he kind of wavered, he'd go, I need to be by myself. Let me just, let me do my thing and I'm coming back. And God began to remind me, he said, yeah, but you didn't get there overnight. He said, remember the day I told you talking about me, dealing with finances for, is when I was single. You need to line things up because things aren't lined right. So what did I do? I said this last time, I went to Danny and Dee and I said, okay, look, huh. it, it wasn't easy because to me, I felt like a failure in this area. And I said, okay, this is, look, I got questions. Didn't happen in one sitting. It happened over time. Then when I got the instruction, I didn't play with it. I didn't go in the Word and try to figure it out. I knew what was right because we talked Scripture in the process. We looked at the Scripture in the process. And then it was like, okay, I've got to apply it. And if I don't apply it, then I can't get the results of what I was just told will happen. Okay. So what do you do? You go in and you find out what's a need, what's a want. You know, your wants right now need to just go on the back burner, and that's what I had to do. Right? I'm just showing you a process of things. So in that, then something else would come up, and I said, okay, now here's this. What about that? And I'll always do that. God reminded me. He said, the reason that I placed you there is because you will go seek the counsel when you need it. And you'll heed to it. So that means I've proven myself there, right? Now, does that mean I don't mess up every now and then? Oh, yeah, I have. Forgot to write a check down. Forgot to write something. But I've never gone in the negative. It's just a moment of like, oh, I caught it. and was like, Lord, and then what do you do? God's like, what are you going to do about that? Tighten up over here. Tighten up over there. You'll be okay. And then I go to him, and he's like, ah, God, I got that. I'm like, you know what? See, he's working on me. Because what? I have to seek God in everything that I do. Because what? I want his hand on it. So is that part of a Bible training center? Well, for me to have the rest of that, yes. 
Because the vision is there, but I have to have the rest of that. Right? So in that, it was challenging at first, but then all of a sudden, it didn't become challenging anymore. It was pretty cool. Now to say that, we're going to keep going. I'm, so we're at 23. Let's go to 24. It says, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members, what? Rejoice with it. It's big how unity and harmony work together. God says, when you come together as a body, let me work out the details. Because he can't work out my details with you. He has to work my details out with me. Well, he works your details out with you, right? But the purpose is, then what am I doing with my details? What am I doing with me? Am I saying, okay, God, I'm going to keep doing what you've asked me to do so you can keep what? Working with them. Keep doing what you need because there's a purpose. And if we take our eyes off of the purpose, schism comes in. And he said, what was I doing? To take the schism out, right? We're still talking government. We're still talking government. We're still talking about keeping things in order, right? Okay. So then we go to verse... Um, 27. Now, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Now, I thought this was pretty cool because how many times have we read it? Danny's done teachings about the fivefold ministry, right? Woo, not everybody like that. But it's part of the fivefold, and what is the fivefold for? To do the work of the ministry, develop the saints to do the work of the ministry. But look at the word governments. Again, it's very important because that word means steering, a pilotage. Someone who has directorship in the church. Hmm. That means someone who's been in it like an airplane. You have to have a pilot, right? To fly an airplane. And then you have a co-pilot, right? Then you have what? You've got, you've got your, what are they, flight attendants. But you have, but he sits here, he goes, look, God has set some in the church. First apostles secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps governments, diversity of tongues. Governments is huge because that is the one that God's calling to steer. That's a steering. I thought that was like, wow. Well, who's our head? Well, we say, well, Jesus is, a, he is the head of the body, but now we're all one. So now who's directing the body? Isn't it God himself? So, but he's got to have a co-pilot. Does he not? He's got to have somebody down here leading and guiding and doing that, right? We're a Bible training center. God began to show me them two. Are those, do they operate in those areas? Of course they do. Every one of them. But government stands out because a lot of people think, well, government's just authority, dominion. No, in this instant, it means there's a steering that must take place. But it has to be from somebody who knows how to do it. And what I find is whenever they're called to what? Go out, connect, network, what? It's to what? We're a Bible training center. Developing believers in their gifts and callings. It's not just in this house. It's the body. So that means when they're connected also out there, what are they doing? And, and God gave me this. He, it was like, because they're also helping others that will allow the help. They know how to steer. And some people don't like that because they're like, you can't tell me what to do. That's your problem. 
I got to the point that I was like, Lord, I don't want, I don't want to do it myself. I don't want that accountability because I don't do it right. I want to do it right. So I know where to go, what? To the one that can steer me right. Come on now. It's huge. And I'm like, wow, diversity of time, all that's there. You love to help people. You love that. But you also operate in what? Miracles? Do we operate in signs and wonders? Everybody in this room does. But here's the thing. We have to have somebody who's willing to what? Walk in the level of a govern the government that God has given them to steer the body. And it's not just in this house. That's what people don't understand. It's not. And I was like, wow, that is so awesome. That is so good. So now we're going to go to a very famous scripture he loves, Philippians 3. Everybody still good? <laughs> All right, Philippians 3. <laughs> All right, Lord, I guess we'll just start with verse one. <laughs> it says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. If we sat there and allowed grieve, things that would... What we do to be grievous, we wouldn't get very far and we wouldn't get much accomplished. See, God knows who he's putting in where the positions he's putting them in. Because what, what do we do over and over and over and over again so many times? Just what Paul did. It never grieves. He's saying it never grieves me to come to you again. It never. Because that means you want it. That means if I'm coming to you, that means you need it. Somebody's crying out. Somebody's hollering out. Somebody needs to hear it again. Sometimes you got to hear something again and again and again. That's why I say when I study and I take people through scripture, we're going to go back. And I'll take you a little further and then I'm going to go back and we're going to connect it all. Then we're going to go back. Why? Because it's got to be repetitious. And I remember I've, I've had some people like, oh, would you stop? Nope. I won't. I can't. Then he goes, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concisions. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of the Pharisees, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Ye doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may what? Win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of what? The law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by what? Faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I've already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am what? Apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to, to have apprehended, but though this one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Whose calling is it? It's God's calling. But you can't obtain it unless you what? 
do it through Jesus, accepting him as what? Lord and Savior. Again, people want to go through God, but don't want to bring Jesus into it, and you can't. It just doesn't work that way. Paul has never not said, I know who I was, I know what I did, and I know why I did it. But you know what? Now look at me. You don't got to tell me. I already know. But he said, but here's the thing. I don't look at it. You do. See, that's why some people can't understand vision because they still got the wrong vision on the inside. They got the vision of the past. Right. They got the vision of the junk. Well, I'm not, I'm not worthier than that. Well, if that's what you believe, that's your vision, and I can't change that. Only you can change your vision. We put it up there. We show you the vision for here. And if God has called us to usher in the return of Jesus Christ, come on. But what? We're a Bible training center, right? We got to get that. We have to understand that and know everything follows in that. Everything. It's kind of like if you look at the vision, you see the head of it was on the screen earlier. And then there's the body. And it all goes what? Together. To achieve what? God's purpose. See, we're not just a church going to save people. We're going to train people. We're going to equip people. Right? And then I'm going to continue being trained. I'm going to continue being equipped. Just saying. Ah, let's see. Verse 15 says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk. So as you have us for what? An ensample. For many walk of whom I've told you often. And now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. So he's warning them. He's telling them this is how you should walk. And if you don't, then what? You are, you're walking the walk of the devil. Because he is the enemy. They, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Mm. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversations is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, who shall change our vile body that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to even subdue all things unto himself. Now, verse 20, we've heard this before. Pastor Danny's talked on this. It says that for our conversation is where? In heaven. That conversation is what? Citizenship. What you're a citizen of is displayed by what you say, what you relay. And this is so hard for people to understand. And I, yes, there's still things I'm working out, but what you confess is where you're saying your citizenship is at. We have looked in Scripture and we have seen what God has said about our wholeness. We have seen what he said about not having to worry about anything. He got us. He's our source. He's our supply, right? He's also the one that says, I'm going to correct you. I'm going to do all these things. Why? To, yeah, get us where we need to be. For us or for his purpose? His purpose. But see, so many want to continue looking at themselves. They want to continue going, well, I mean, you know, I just don't understand. I'm sitting here and all this stuff is going down and all this stuff is happening. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh. And I said, well, so far I've heard nothing but you. You're trying to fix something that it's too big for you. It's too big for you. Just like me, I'm sitting here and he says, for our conversation is in heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So then verse 21 goes on and says, who shall change our what? Ooh, vile body. 
that it may be fashioned like unto his what? Glorious body, according to the working whereby he's able even to subdue all things to himself. Now, remember how I talked to you earlier about the word subdue, submission. It means to subject, to put into subjection, to obey, to be obedient, put under, make subject, to submit self unto, to arrange, to put in order. That's a lot, I know. Right? But he said, for what? According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. How can he do that? Because where's his citizenship? It's in heaven. That's his conversation. See, once you understand and you realize the government that we sit in, we've been given what? He says, all power and authority that was given to me is now what? Given to you. So that I can be what? Like Jesus, who is what? My brother, my, the joint heir, right? Because who's our head? Our father. He says, if you've seen the father, then you've seen me. But he couldn't convince the disciples of that. Because what had happened? They got so caught up on him that he was trying, no, I need you to see what? The Father. Because he's the head. I just kind of brought you the entrance. I made the way. I opened the door. See, we're in the year of 5784. It's a year of open doors. In the, in the Hebrew calendar, it's the year of open doors. But here's the thing. So many people want to, that God opened a door for me. We talked about this in New Way. God will not open a door you're not ready for. But when it opens, don't hesitate. Walk through it. You have to. Because guess what? You won't walk through it by yourself because God has placed someone who what? Is going to steer. Right? To help you what? Develop in your gift, in your calling. Isn't that what we do? Again, I'm going to keep reiterating that over and over and over again. He gave us the fivefold, absolutely. One of them, again, operating in governments as well. That means what? To know how. See, you can't, if you don't know how to steer, God is not going to give you the wheel. <laughs> he won't. You have to trust the process. You have to trust even when you don't like it. But we have to also understand, too, when Jesus came, people look at Jesus came and he did all these things. What did Jesus say? I only did what the Father did. I only said what the Father said. I only did what he said to do. See, again, people go, well, Lord, I mean, it's going to be a miracle. You said, Lord, you take care of me. If I ever had a need, you've got my need. Yes. So do you trust me? I do. And then they're looking up. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And yet he's talking to someone else. I'm going to use you to bring to pass what they're trusting me for. But see, sometimes we also want to not look to you that God's called to bring it to pass for me. But God's telling me, you trust me, I'll take care of it. So I, if I'm going to keep looking up and thinking something's going to miraculously fall through the ceiling, I'm wrong. And there are people out there that go by those things. They go by signs. We've talked about this. Things I've never seen, and I'm like, okay, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, just saying, but I'm not going to trust that. That's not where my trust is. My trust is in him that he's going to do what he said he would do. How? I don't know. But I better be paying attention because he just said, as far as the members of the body, there's going to be some that aren't going to be that strong. They're not going to look very comely. But you know what? When I put me on it, they will be. So don't sit here and reject what I have approved. Don't reject what I have already put in motion. See, that's what Jesus did. He came what? We celebrate the birth. Yes, because we needed him. But we celebrate the death because it gave us the doorway to the Father, to sit in those, what, heavenly places. Because we sat here and we have an empire government. We are called sons. So we're what? We're sitting here and we're, what are we doing with the name? We're establishing the name. But what the enemy has come in, and look, I'm just going to tell you, over years and over time, the enemy's come in 
to the church and they water down the word to where they're not really holding people really that accountable right now. And it's sad because here we have to hold each other, what, accountable. And if it makes somebody mad, I can't help that. I've got to hold you accountable to the same thing I'm accountable to. Well, that just makes me feel. Well, don't go by your feelings or they'll get hurt real quick. You've got to sit here and allow God to do what he needs to do because you're important to the body. Not just this body, but the body of Christ too. So Jesus came and Jesus said, I have come to bring you back to the original intent. So Jesus said, now, you want to go back to the original intent? I brought you back to the original intent. Now you've got to just wait on what? Look into him. Look into God. Jesus said, I've done my part. But now you need to get in there and you need to do your part. See, again, it can't fall just out of the sky. He said, I've given you every resource you need. Every source you need. Well, I don't, I don't like my situation. I don't like my circumstances. Well, keep trying to fix it yourself and it's not going to change. It'll get worse. But Jesus said, I've opened the door for you. And we're in the year of open door. People, how, how many of you are really happy where you're at? How many of you out there are really happy where you're at? Don't you want more? Don't you want? I want everything God has for me, for his glory. Not the material stuff. That'll come. That's, part, that's, that's the stuff he'll give us. But I want to do everything he wants me to do. And that means you got to think differently. When he shared that about what we were talking about, you know, bringing back what Farron had said about you'll never struggle with finances again. And then God asked me, do you know why? And I'm like, well, because you told him. He goes, because I put you in charge of it. And I said, you know, and I have a very strong desire never to let that go. I, ha I can't because who put me in charge of that? God did. So this is where, again, there are those in our lives that have been put in charge of some things. They have a higher accountability to do those things. And if they don't disperse it correctly or disperse it at all, then they're held accountable to that. So this is where, again, I was talking, um, talking with my daughter and we were talking last night, and some know, some don't. They had a fire uh, here recently, and it, and it burned their bus and half of their shop. And it was so hot that the fire, when it hit the t metal, the metal got so hot, it caught the tree on fire above it. And there were so many hot spots. They couldn't, they have an idea of what happened. They really couldn't say one way or another. There was no blame. It was just a maintenance thing, one of those things, the fuel line was just too close to the wire and once it melted the fuel line, it was done. Well, what was interesting is she finally told me who was coming down the drive to buy it. Tell me what God, what God won't do. The people that were coming, they literally were turning into the drive when it caught on fire. It was a gospel band that was coming for the bus. And this was an older group that loved the Lord. And my daughter was, you know, struggling with, you know, it just seemed like a lot. And I said, but honey, I need you to change the way you're looking at this. God protected them. God protected them. But, and she goes, yeah, she said, I would have felt horrible if they would have left and got down the road and this. And I said, well, that would have been what happened because God protected them. I said, your heart was to do this. I said, and see, I get bits and pieces of this picture more and more. I said, so don't be upset about it. Everything's in motion for you guys on it. I know it's an eyesore and it stinks and everything else. They, could, they live about 25, 30 minutes outside of town, and they said in town you could see the black smoke. That's just how large of a fire it was. Nine fire trucks. Three different counties came and they came very quickly and, and, and I thank the Lord for that but when she told me that I said God's got them God's protecting them and they traveled to get there but God see 
you're faithful to him, he will be faithful to you. Everything is what on his shoulders. But we also got to allow the ones that God has put in place to pilot, to steer. Come on. But it's not just like you said earlier, Sunday's what the least of who we are. It really is. It's an everyday thing. How many conversations do you have a day that you feel like a repetition? I know we've had several of them. It's just repetition. I said, look, I know I've asked this before, but I got to do it again. I got to do it again. Just like with him. I said, look, I ask questions. I want to know. I have to know. And if I think I'm missing something, I'm going to go back and find out what. Okay, now we talked about this. Now, what did you say on that? I just didn't write it down. That's why I like carrying a notebook. It's that important to me. So know when we celebrate his birth, whoo, you're not just celebrating this baby that was born. You're celebrating yours too. Because where was your birth? In him. You went to the cross with him <laughs> and born again. Isn't that powerful? Yes. We're going to stop there. I've got more, but we'll just have to stop there. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your plans, your purpose. Oh, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, his birthday. We celebrate that. And in that, we celebrate us because, Lord, hmm, we died with him and we rose with him. Holy Spirit, just continue, continue to lead us and guide us. Showing us truth in the word of who we are. Understanding more about the position and the seat that we've been given. Because it was already all in the sun. And what's his is ours. And that now we have direct access to the throne We lean not to our own understandings, but we only lean to God. We lean to the Word. We love you, and we thank you. Amen.